Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk, uh, the podcast for uh, human skills and mindset. Today, we have a guest uh, whom I know uh, for a while, and I requested him to be a part of this podcast to share his uh, wisdom insights around how he, uh, I would say, uh, progress uh, in his uh, career starting uh, in a pretty uh, entry level and then and get it to uh, the principal or director level at this point. So before I uh, proceed ahead, uh, I would like to welcome Debbie, uh, or I would say Debbie Dattananda, that's the, the full name. Uh, thank yeah. you and, and thanks for your time on this podcast. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you, Saurav. Thank you for the opportunity to share my story. And I'm really excited to be part of this. Definitely. So, uh, Debbie, let, let's start, uh, get started about yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. I know who you are, but uh, the audience may not. So could you okay. uh, just give us a brief introduction about yourself? Absolutely. So, as Saurav said, my name is Debbie Dattananda, but go by the name Debbie. Uh, a principal technical specialist with Microsoft. It's a organization within uh, sales. It's a role within sales organization. Uh, I am natively from India, uh, specifically from a city called Bhuvaneshwar in the state of Orissa, which falls in the eastern part of India. And uh, I live in Dallas, Texas, here in US uh, since last six, six plus years. And uh, that's who I am. I, I am married. Uh, my wife's name is Rosie, and I have a son called Zoom, and he's four and a half years old. Perfect. That's great. So let's get started about uh, your journey, your professional journey. Uh, how exactly? I know that uh, you came to the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. from Finland. So how was your journey from that? How you end up in the U.S.? Maybe I'll, I'll start with that. Interesting question. Thank you. So I'll take a step back on that one. I'll tell you how I landed up in Finland and how this opportunity came Perfect. out. Perfect. That would be better. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I graduated in 2008 uh, from University called Kids. I did my uh, bachelor's in technology, engineering, electronics, and telecommunication. Got my campus placement, just like usual people, into Tata Consultancy Services, one of the biggest consulting firms in India. Um, then I started my career in uh, Chennai, Tamil Nadu in India, working for TCS. Then uh, after working for a year, I got an opportunity to go to on-site for my uh, customer, Nokia, who are based out of Finland. Uh, that was my first out-of-the-country trip, so I was really excited. I went there, worked for Nokia for from TCS for almost two and a half years. Uh, then I think the client was happy with my work and my persona, and they, they think I am worthy enough to be an offer to come over to Nokia. So uh, I joined Nokia in 2012, April. Exactly after two years, I came over to Finland to work for them. And that's how my uh, journey started from there. Uh, in Nokia, I was a senior program manager for the, the Lumia lens, the Lumia camera application. Uh, all the camera that you see now on the Surface devices is basically the same thing. Um, Lumia phones, if you remember, the Windows phones in those times. Uh, so it's my team or we were the team in Finland who were making those phones. Uh, then I worked there for almost two years. Then everybody knows that in 2014, uh, Nokia phone division was acquired by Microsoft. So we were some of the lucky ones who were chosen to be transferred over to Microsoft and be a Microsoft employee in Finland. Uh, so we were really happy. So my journey started with Microsoft, if I have to say precisely, in 2014. That's how I became a Microsoft employee and got my blue badge. In 2014, uh, I started working for Microsoft in the same capacity, and then as a senior program manager for the Lumia phones. And this, that was a very customer-facing, enterprise customer-facing role, uh, based out of Finland, covering the entire Europe. Uh, we had teams in US and China and India as well. Uh, Mid of 2015, um, that was the business decision made that the Lumia Phones division is going to be ramped down and eventually shut down. So obviously we were the guys who were affected by that. 
So um, we were given slots that these these are the slots that you will be uh, given your uh, resignation and then basically get the severance package and uh, good luck in your journey. Uh, that time, because we had a set of people who had this customer facing and technical knowledge with the Windows ecosystem, there was an opportunity, there was a requirement in Microsoft US in the consulting division where there are customers who are looking for guys with a skill set like this. So the timing you can say was such that I was in the process of resigning from Microsoft and then this opportunity came to me by my manager like, Debbie, they are looking for people like you. Would you be interested to apply? I said, why not? I would like to keep my employment or continue my journey with Microsoft. So there was almost around 40 plus people who uh, from our organization unit back in Finland who applied to the role uh, in consulting services back in US. I was one of them. Uh, I went through the interview round because of the time reference, it was like two o'clock in the night. You can imagine the anxiety that I had, right? Two o'clock in the night, seven round of interviews. It went all the way up to morning around 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Finland time. And then uh, I was told by the last person the, that, yeah, we will get back to you. Uh, two days passed by, nothing heard. I was actually in the uh, notice period at that time because I already designed. And uh, then I curiously reached out to the hiring manager, uh, like, hey, well, I, I know I had this interview rounds and uh, is there anything that you want me to tell? Uh, is there any update for me that I should be aware of? Then luckily after like, because of the time difference again, uh, I think she replied after almost two hours that, yes, Debbie, things are going good. Uh, we are making an offer for you. So you can go ahead and tell your HR and work with your HR that this is happening. And I was like, wow, what happened? And uh, luckily then the process started and yeah, all those visa and everything went through. They revoked my resignation, they reinstated. They said, yes, you are part of my still continuing your career until the visa is there. You are going to still part of the Microsoft Finland team. And um, luckily everything happened and I came uh, with my wife in 2016, January to US. That's how I landed up in Microsoft US. Wow, that's that's such a story. Uh, uh, I think I have a few things to highlight and I would like to get a bit on on deeper uh -huh. side of it. So as you mentioned that, uh, and I can see it's a combination of uh, uh, skills uh, yeah. at, uh, and right person at the right time, the right moment. Yeah. And, uh, and also the way how you might have uh, presented yourself uh, in these interviews. Yeah. So... Uh, help help us walk through the part, the moment, or I would say that time frame mm -hmm. when you have to resign mm -hmm. and you may not have a clear path ahead. What was going on on, on your mind? Uh, I mean, uh, do you, uh, you were thinking about going back to India, looking at a certain job in Finland. What was those moments? And the reason I'm asking yeah. these questions uh, or this question particularly is when people are in adverse mm -hmm. situations in crisis or in anxiety, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, how would they deal with that? Uh, because again, uh, we focus on that human skills, uh, life happens and, and do yeah. on both the side of the spectrum. So help us uh, walk through that part. What, what was going on in your mind at that time? Great question. Uh, as you can imagine, the newly married guy <laughs> having to resign from his only job, basically his only existence in a country outside his home country is going to be very challenging. Of course, it was not the pleasant scenario or the pleasant situation to be, but I always keep this. Uh, this is like a uh, life motto for me. I always say that anything happens, happens for a reason. It could be good. It could be it could be bad. But if you think that it is for the betterment of you, you can do everything. So in that situation, my state of mind was, OK, I am resigning from Microsoft, but maybe there is a better opportunity outside Microsoft in Finland. And a matter of fact, because of that situation was coming and we were given enough notice period. I already started interviewing outside Microsoft in Finland 
And then uh, I had already two offers outside. They may not be as great as Microsoft, but I still had two offers. So to deal with certain scenarios, my uh, one cent would be that focus on what you can do and not focus on what you're losing. Focus on what you can have. What you're losing is losing. You don't have any control on that. There is no point in thinking about it. You do what's in your control. Keep the head down, calm posture, and do what you need to do. That's it. And that's exactly what I did. And very interestingly, my parents were visiting at that time to me in Finland when this thing happened. I didn't tell them anything because we know our parents. They won't be in the same state of mind. They won't understand the gravity of the situation, just we do. They will panic. Uh, I don't want to create that situation. I wanted to have them a good feeling or the good experience coming to Finland, right? So I kept my calm posture, and did what I had to do, and then live my life. That's the only thing I did. So true, so true. I, I love the fact uh, what you mentioned about uh, you cannot control uh, yeah. outside uh, of uh, around you, right? I mean, the only thing which you can control is yourself. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, instead of being in reactive mode, uh, we can be proactive, as you mentioned, that um, yeah. you you always try to collect yourself and then yeah. uh, reached out to different organizations and even got uh, multiple offers, which yeah. shows that uh, how you thrive in those uh, situations. So right. wonderful. And I, I, I assume your wife also had a good support system uh, for you because in the time of crisis, the family is really behind you uh, in that particular uh, scenario. That's, that's true. She, she has been supporting me till date uh, in every decision I take, whether it's changing mm -hmm. roles, changing companies, uh, moving countries. <laughs> she has gone through the same uh, situation as me. And yes, your family support is much needed because if your family doesn't support you, you cannot handle your family and your job and your crisis situation at the same time. It's going to be difficult. So at least one part is taken care for me. Yes, exactly. So suppose that uh, you reach mm -hmm. to the U.S., uh, so which what kind of job you you got in and uh, I mean oh, is it I think yeah. I recall it's a consulting job yeah so is it something which you really uh, kind of walked through and what what learning experience you got uh, in the in the US uh, if if you have any kind of experience around that absolutely so yes I came as a consultant of mobility to Microsoft mm -hmm. Consulting Services in US. I was based out of New York, and uh, that role had this, needed the similar skill set that I have. It was a customer-facing role, and it did needed to support technically the customers who are part of the Windows ecosystem and they're using Windows mobile devices. The, the learnings that I had in that role were really interesting because I came from a program manager background. Program manager roles are typically in the engineering side. Right, we you follow a different sort of process, sprint, life cycle of the product when you're in the engineering team. When you're in the consulting team, you're actually on the different spectrum of the product. You are responsible for dealing with the customer issues, dealing with the deployment, make sure the customer's adoption is 100%. And what they want from the product is what they're getting. If there is nothing, you are the bridge between the engineering and the customer. That's what a consulting person does in Microsoft Consulting Services. And that's exactly my role was. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. I could utilize my Windows Phone Learning and I could learn the mobility solutions that Microsoft provides for this Windows device management. Yeah. Okay, perfect, that's great. Uh, and I think, uh, as you mentioned, that you had a, a learning about, uh, I mean, the previous learning and previous skill set yeah. did not just kind of uh, lay around uh, doing nothing. There's always a way out when you learn a particular skill and then try to improvise and uh, include that as a part of your subsequent skill set. Right. So uh, in that case, uh, so you move uh, from Microsoft Finland, from yeah. uh, Nokia uh, and, and came here. 
and then you start working the consulting. Uh-huh. So are you are you still uh, the part of the consulting business, or you moved uh, from there? No, I, I I actually moved uh, moved couple of roles. So, mm-hmm. in consulting, I came as a consultant as an entry level consultant. Um, then uh, I got my first promotion after two years. Then I became a senior, and then uh, I got another promotion in eighteen months. That is another senior level two, as you can say, uh, in Microsoft. And uh, after that, I moved to another organization called Microsoft Fast Track. Mm-hmm. Uh, fast track is uh, typically an organization which deploys all the microsoft workloads that a customer purchases or customer license out it's it's part of their licensing skew so in fast track my role was a modern work architect and i was responsible for the deployment adoption and consumption of the microsoft licenses that the customer owns that is a post sales job uh, that gave me a good understanding of how Microsoft's licensing stack and sales works, what customer wants from Microsoft in terms of licensing and product set and et cetera. And uh, I did that for almost 18 months to two years. And then uh, I moved over to sales. Basically from post-deployment, I came to pre-deployment or pre-sales. That's uh, what landed me in this role as a principal technical specialist. Uh, again, um, the best thing that happened with this one is uh, I got the promotion, uh, which we call from senior to principal. And principal is also a level of a director level in Microsoft. And uh, that's how I landed here. And uh, that's how I am today. Oh, that's that's great. Uh, so let's let's try to uh, discuss a bit more on this uh, because uh-huh. this, these are some of the commonly questions which people ask in any any organization about okay. uh, about promotions and mm-hmm. and going to different levels. Well, promotion is definitely uh, one of the the way to show that you are progressing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is much more deeper meaning about having a success in your life and success mm-hmm. is perspective. I mean, some people yeah. see as a kind of a promotion, some people see as a, uh, as a kind of work-life integration. Yeah. And, 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 and some see a promotion as a part of uh, what you're following, the passions and ambitions. Yep. Uh, in, in your case, uh, I know that you have got uh, promotions fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. which is uh, really inspiring because first, as you mentioned, that uh, you thrive under crises and and you have a certain mindset. So people who are looking forward to having these uh, success uh, yeah. metrics in life, w- what's your, uh, can you just give us a kind of a, maybe a brain dump or something, like a mindset, w- what helped you to, uh, get these success in your life and moving to different roles. What is that inner, I would say, the core of your mindset, uh, which really helps you to drive through uh, until now? Okay, I will lay out in parts. Okay, first, the first part I would like to touch is uh, what was my mindset and how I got the promotion. What was my approach? So my mindset always, from the beginning of my career, was whatever I am doing. I should learn that quickly, deliver the best I can, and try to thrive or always thrive for the next level. Because the next level will be, you want to do more. I always want to do more. That was my mindset. So every role, for example, when I landed in consulting, I wanted to understand what this consulting role is, what are the needed things from me, as an employee, and what are the things that I was expecting from the company to support me in my journey? Because you have the complete responsibility, authority, and potential to shape your career the way you want. Only you can shape it. Nobody else will. People can help you, but you have to decide where you want to go. The second part is, as you said, like, what people think, what's the promotion criteria, what are the things that they should be doing. You have to think whether you wanted to promote and go to the next level or you wanted to learn what you are doing to the extent that you can be pretty focused. You are like master of one technology and not jack of all trades. 
And the third thing, the most important thing is whether you are getting the work-life balance or not, or the mental peace or not in what you are doing, whether you're liking or not. So for me, I always try to balance them. I didn't want to overburn because I have a family. I want to support my family and time, give time to my family as well. So I was lucky enough and I was always looking for something that some roles that has good work-life balance. So for me, if I have to uh, describe my journey from a consultant, consultant to a principal technical specialist is any role that I was doing, I always work alongside my manager and ask the right questions like, what should I be doing in your opinion in this role to be successful? What should I be doing from day zero to go to the next level in terms of promotion? Because you need to uh, work, you need to perform at the next level to be eligible for the next level. That's what the criteria is. So I always did that. I always push myself to the limits, learn it, deliver whatever is uh, needed from me or whatever the measurement criteria for my performance, and then do something beyond that. The beyond could be helping others, helping the organization, helping the business. And I always try to show, this is just my philosophy, I always try to show my impact in terms of dollar value because business runs on dollars. If you can show your work or your impact in some dollar value, hey, I did this and this generated this much of revenue or this has saved this much of operational cost for Microsoft or for the customer that I bring in customer satisfaction back to Microsoft. That's what I always did. And that's what helped me in all these roles. And promotion could be... Uh, could be difficult in some scenarios, but I would say it's not uh, impossible. Why I say difficult is you don't want to be promoted too easily, too soon, so that you don't learn what level you are or you don't learn what work you are doing. You always, it's a good, it's a good philosophy to learn what you are doing 100% and then go to the next level because you should be always be able to apply your learnings from the past role to the next role or the next level. And uh, that's what has helped me. And that's how I got promoted. And that's how I approach the promotion. Mm, that's that's great. So a few things to <laughs> highlight what you mentioned, just mm -hmm. to make sure that people uh, comprehend those things as well, is to give you 100% uh, on, in your existing True. role or existing position uh, yep. before you ask for a level up in any, I mean, in any organization or any work, yeah. you have to prove that you have a right mindset, a, a way, a vision, and you can pull the thing, uh, uh, things through in your existing position before you ask for the elevated ones. And at the same time, yeah. as we say that if you want to be a millionaire, you have to think like a millionaire. Yes. So if you want to be promoted to a next level, try to uh, perform the duties, responsibilities on that level so that you mm -hmm. can really justify that. Yes. And and the other important thing you mentioned is about having a constant uh, circle of feedback with your leaders, with your peers, yeah. or maybe to the role uh, or position which you are looking for because... Yeah. That way you get to know what it takes. And and as you mentioned, learning is so important. Uh, so we cannot be perfect. So if we have that constant learning mindset, that mm -hmm. will also help you to grow uh, perfectly fine. So that's wonderful. Uh, so I would like to ask about, uh, as you mentioned, reaching out uh, feedbacks and learning, how much importance you give to the networking? Uh, a lot of people have all the abilities to reach out, have all the capabilities, responsibility, clarity, but they still uh, would like to know that, okay, I have everything from what I have understood and I reached out to the people, but still, why I'm unable to make my mark, why I always be left behind maybe an inch before reaching to that level. So... For me, I think it's like maybe networking, one of the things which is a part of it as well. What's your perspective on that? Great question. 
So when you said networking, I just want to clarify one thing that networking means growing your known people circle within and outside the company that you're working. That's what we're talking about when we say networking. There are a couple of things which I always keep in mind, or I would like to say keep in your mind when you are trying to make an impact, trying to get a promotion, trying to advance in your career. First thing is you don't ask, you never get it. So you have to ask and work for it what you want. The second thing is make an impact of what you are doing. That means do it right, do it to the 100% of your ability and you will be known, people will know you. The third and the most important thing as we're talking about is networking. Networking could be your direct peers, your peers within the organization, your peers outside the organization. The way you should or you should take approach towards networking is the people you are meeting in the office, in the meetings, at the customer site, they should know you for your work first. If you are going as a consultant, as a mobility consultant, people should know, yeah, Debbie is a mobility consultant and he's working for Microsoft and he's here to do this. That's the first step. The next step comes how you are delivering the stuff because your work should speak for yourself. Once you did that, you try to make a connection to the people, try to find some synonyms of oh, with your work and their role or their work. Try to reach out to the people and go with a learning mindset. Don't just go with the mindset that I know it all, but go with the mindset that I, I want to learn it all. Try to learn from them. And that's how you build a network. The network you build is the only thing is going to persist and is only thing is going to be helpful if you want to advance your career, because those are the people who are going to be your advocates going forward. For example, I speak to uh, Saurav. Saurav is very good in his uh, security skill set. When I came from mobility, I wanted to learn from that. So what I said, I, I, I said it, uh, Saurav, help me in understanding the security uh, products or the security offerings for Microsoft. That's how I approach. I wanted to learn. Don't be shy in saying that I don't know this, I want to learn this. Mm -hmm. Just be proactive, reach out. Hey man, I think this is really good stuff that you're doing. Can I learn it? Will you be helpful in doing that? What should I do? What are the things that we needed to do to be successful? That's what I would say networking in my opinion. Perfectly said. Yep, yep. It's, it's important just to... Uh, I, I love uh, the thing which you mentioned that... Uh, People should should know you by your work, and yeah. uh, and then when we talk about work, then there are a lot of other uh, things which also comes attached with this about the passion, the integrity, the learning uh, skills yeah. which you mentioned that constantly has to develop. And uh, I'll also add that uh, to a part like to be humble. Uh, mm -hmm. It's for us. It's very easy to fall into the cracks of being an expert and as you mentioned that know-it-all uh, which causes us to be a bit on on the side of maybe I would say in some scenarios that are around the arrogance or yeah. or not kind of understanding or not properly empathize about what the other person is uh, going through and right. on the top it uh, it's a listening skills as well so now let's move on as i mentioned listening skills now you are as you mentioned you are in the pre-sales mm -hmm. uh, which means that the listening skills would be one of the primary factor to understand what customer is looking for before you go yeah. ahead and and generate some uh, uh advancement towards the monetary benefits for the microsoft and obviously the solution benefits uh, what customer is looking for. Right. So w what's your what's your perspective about your uh, pre-sales at this point, about what you have learned? I know that uh, you recently moved, but yeah. still mm -hmm. you are developing some perspective about pre-sales, about how the thing works. So what's what uh, have you learned so far and you would like to advise to the people who are trying to 
or looking forward for uh, your technical specialist role as well? Great question. Uh, as you said, I am also learning now on the technical specialist role because I recently moved to this role. One of the key things that I learned here is, as you said, listening. You have to listen first rather than telling, right? If you listen to the customer, let's say if you are having a conversation with the customer, listen to them. In that listening, you will be able to figure out their needs, their visions, their business impacts that they expect from Microsoft. Get those feedback and keep it as your notes that, yeah, those are the things that maybe we are able to offer or try to understand the gaps where customer stands. Once you have those points with you, try to map them to the solutions that we can provide, right? So listening is very important. In, in the tech world, everybody is selling, right? Everybody is selling in some way or other, but you don't have to be obvious to show that you are a seller, right? My approach or whatever I learned from the people who I worked with when I was in Fast Track from the sales team is that don't just go as a seller and say, I am here to sell this. Just go as, how can I help you? I'm one more resource from Microsoft sales team who can help you prioritize or help you narrow down your needs and offer you the best solution that we may can offer right? And then the customer can decide what they want to do. And that's my approach as a technical specialist in the sales. So anybody who is looking for this role, my uh, two cents would be, be firm on your technologies, be uh, open to the customer feedbacks, customer stories, try to get those feedbacks, try to get the feedback, how they have their journey with Microsoft, whether the customer in the past have uh, uh, used some of the Microsoft products, whether they're happy, whether they wanted to improve their footprint or not, try to learn those things first. And then try to go and say, this is your problem statement and this is my solution. Can we start working on that? Can we start talking more on that one? And that's the approach I'm taking in my initial stages. So anybody coming to sales, I think that's the best approach. Talk to the customer, listen to them first, then do the formulation with our Microsoft offerings. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, listening and sincerely listening <laughs> yeah. before uh, reaching out and, and uh, give, providing assistance because if you're not sincere, then yeah. people quickly identify that. And yes. uh, and obviously the whole intention for which you are talking to the customer may get diluted. So totally agree with that, actually. A uh, lot of good points on that. So mm -hmm. that uh, being said, uh, let's uh, move on to the final section uh, of our discussion. It's around okay. uh, it, when you're talking, I mean, there are a lot of people who would uh, listen or view this podcast and uh, would like to reach out to you. So two okay. sections of this question. One is, how can people reach out to you? Uh, and if uh, people are reaching out to you for mentorship or any guidance, mm -hmm. what do you expect from them to be prepared before they reach out? Because uh, there are a lot of people who might have, like you do X, Y, Z before you reach out instead of would you be would you like to be my mentor or something like that? So what's, what, what are your advice uh, on those? Yeah, good. Um, I'm a very social person. So to answer your first question, yes, people can reach out to me. I think the best way to reach out to me for any kind of professional discussions would be LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I can share my LinkedIn profile. You are most welcome to visit it. If you think that I am worthy enough to talk to you, please leave me a message on LinkedIn and we can start from there. We can find some time. Finding 30 minutes is not a difficult thing on my calendar. I can always give time. So please reach out to me over LinkedIn. That's the best way. You can find my email also there. Uh, you can reach out to me over email as well. The second part is uh, while you are reaching out, what are the things that I want you to be prepared for when you're coming over a 30 minutes call to me? First, uh, I think I 
I have an understanding that you are coming to me after seeing this podcast. So if you have heard about my story, my expertise, my journey, typically with Microsoft, then prepared what are you expecting from me in terms of guidance or mentorship? What is that thing, whether technically, whether business side, whether career advancement side, whether networking side you wanted to talk about? Have a proper and uh, right mindset about your goals, your understandings, and what you are expecting of me. So if you come prepared with these three points, I think we have a good starting point. Great, yeah. So having a clarity of what you're looking for is so important.